time you did throw to us, Jess. Thank you very much for that. So we get set for our second race of the weekend here at the Clipsal 500. The Aussie racing cars on the circuit for the first race of this year's series. And Warren Luff's back alongside me. We've just pointed out the Hertz car is back on the circuit. But Kel Tresseter, man, he was good in qualifying. Look, he did a great job out there. Not the, not the biggest uh, margin we've seen in qualifying around here, but still strong performance from him. He's really keen to make amends for last year. What about Jai Robson's effort down there in fifth position on debut? Same two to Kobe Rontanay back there in tenth position, standing on the fifth row alongside Stevenson. The two Thompsons on the next row. Blake Skiveris, Jeff Waters back in uh, 13th and 14th, back to Sam Milton, Scotty O'Keefe and Lee Bowler, Michael Rinkin in the 71 machine, American Bill Hines is out there, double duties in the 57 car this weekend, the two ladies, Madison Dunstan and Emma Clark on the next row, back to Dontis Bowler, O'Brien and Ross Higgins at the back of the field of 30 plus cars here for the season opener, been coming here since 2004, some of the toughest and tightest finishes we've ever seen, including that one a few years ago, was decided by 41 ten thousandths of a second. Tell you what, I've got to take my hat off to Bill Hines out there. You could not get a greater contrast of cars that he's racing this weekend. One minute, he's in a small, very nimble little Aussie race car. Point it, goes wherever you want. Next minute, literally in about another half an hour, he's out there in the stadium trucks, jumping these things. Like, how do you cope? He said to me yesterday, the logistical nightmare is this afternoon, going from this to that, how are they going to do it? And when they take this car back to the stadium truck pits or vice versa, he'll work that one out later on. The man from Nazareth, Pennsylvania, has a lot to do with the Andretti Autosport team in Indy cars. He teamed up with Carlos Munoz last year, and they almost won the 100th Indy 500 over there. He'll start further back in the field as now. We get a bit of shade on this Barry Sheen pit straight. This amazing South Australia fly cam, which is going to bring some incredible pitches over the next three days. As day one starts to wind down here at the Clipsal 500. Some really ugly clouds were hanging around just before. That's gone away now. And really looking forward to this seven lap race with some surprise packets inside the top 10. The usual suspects up there. I think Kel Tressler is looking to make a statement in this first race. He certainly is, but uh, but we've seen over the years these guys put on some of the best racing that we'll see all weekend. The amount of lead changes, two, three, four wide into some of these corners around here. So, look, these guys are action-packed, and today's going to be no different. Hopefully we don't get it polluted with safety cars like we did last year. It was hard to get some momentum going. It's this hearty crowd that have been here today in the grandstands. It's been very, very warm. Cars right around the back of the corner here at the Adelaide Hairpin. And not too far away from the first race of the 2017 season. As the revs rise up, we'll see the red lights come on. It's time to go racing in 2017. It's lights out. Cal Tresseter on the front row should get the jump here. Craig Woods is going with him on the better line down here into turn number one. And Tresseter will lead us through. Woods will hold down second. A spinner further back. That's Luke Fraser. His best qualifying effort sends the field scatter in an Uber gang. Slams the tyre wall. And this is going to be a traffic jam. Not a good start for these guys. Hopefully we can oh! pull another one in there. And that's Dontis, Troy Dontis in the Flurio Milk Company entry. Has gone in hard, passenger side though. As much as he can in one of these cars. That was a big hit for car number 40. Yeah, that was a big one then. Good to see him moving around there in the car, but uh, a side impact is never a good thing to see. Didn't quite pick up what actually started the, uh, the chain reaction that we've seen here. Most importantly, both guys are moving around. Troy's getting out of the car there. Uh, probably a little bit winded, but um, yeah, unfortunately, safety car's on track. We're watching the opposite side. That's the view from race control. In fact, that's the next door to us here. And the safety car is out. So I spoke too early, and that curse that follows me around the country starts off again, as it did in 2016. We've seen it so many times here at the start of the races. That, that run down into the first chicane here, it's quite narrow through there. Cold tyres the, going over the kerbs. Cars tend to bounce around, bounce off each other. Uh, and unfortunately, if there is any contact, there's really no room for error here with those walls being so close. Replay at the start, heading down towards the centre chicane. So Luke Fraser was in this and gets a tag. I held back there to see what was happening there. And he's assisted off the track down into turn one. It's just such a narrow corner. The view from Duckworth, Duckworth's machine, I should say. Heading down into the chicane here. Another replay. So look to the inside now. You'll see the 39. A bit ambitious mm. down the inside there. You've got to give each other room going into, into that first chicane. And uh, that's what started. But it's, it's what happens behind this is going to be the interesting thing. But Adam Urbergang, great to take evasive action right there. And 
watch for Dantas to come into the background. Look yeah. at the wheels up here. And lucky not to collect any other cars coming through, but unfortunately, lots of damage to the Uber Gang transport entry. Goes in, he straightened it up just in time. Again, it looks like it's panel damage, fiberglass damage to that. Lucky those tire walls of which they're about three or four rows thick down there. It'll still hurt. It'll still give him a little bit of whiplash there, but like you said, it's, uh, it does look like it's more sort of cosmetic damage. I don't think we'll see him back out in this one. Again, on board here. Yeah, it just hasn't, hasn't given him racing room. And that's basically what starts the, uh, the Constantina effect from there. And now watch for Dantas to come left-hand side here. I know they're small cars, but even that he's ridden up the wheel. Can't see who that is going into, but watch for the impact. Left-hand side. And gets it square on onto the tyre wall, tearing the front of the Fleurieu Milk Company off the side there right now. Imagine if that was another 10 feet forward to the left. Raw concrete, these blocks are 1.5 tonne. They don't move very quickly. So, safety car stays out here. These laps do count behind, so we're on the second lap as Tressida, Walsh, Woods, Robson, and Duckworth. Kobe Rontane inside the top six right now after starting from 10th position. Then Stevenson, Thompson repairing that car earlier today, and there's the damage to car number 63. If there's a positive to come out of this, there's plenty of time now before the next race. Yeah, there certainly is, and uh, we might have got it a little bit wrong. I think there's a little bit more than just cosmetic damage yeah. on that car there. You can see that front wheel laying over. So obviously there's some kind of suspension damage on that front left corner. Hopefully it hasn't sort of done anything to the chassis of the car. But look, these guys have got great support in this series and, uh, and there's always plenty of parts to go around. So uh, as you said, hopefully we can see them back out for race two. Let's go down to pit lane with Cam. Yeah, guys, I jumped in with the Western Sydney Motorsport crew that have been looking after Adam Uber gang. And uh, the comment from them was, looks like no swimming for us tonight. <laughs> yes, it'll be a perfect night for it. Unfortunately, we're here to go racing this weekend. The field continues behind the back of the safety car here on the streets of Adelaide on lap number two. This will eat into the race, like we said, and may set us up for maybe a three-lap screamer, depending on how hard the staff and workers down in the chicane. They've had their work cut out today. It's always a tricky one, isn't it, Thursday here at Clipsall, trying to get the track rubbered down. We do see some mistakes which you commonly wouldn't see at other tracks on the first day. No, certainly not. As, as you said, the big thing here is, again, it's a street circuit. It's not a circuit that sees action throughout the year. So the track, in terms of what we call very green, meaning there's not a lot of rubber down, it's quite dirty in terms of what you'd be normally used to when you go to a, uh, a normal round. So traditionally, you'll always see the lap times get faster as the weekend goes on. And there's two reasons for that. Obviously, number one, the track does improve greatly. But as we've spoken about many times already, it's all about confidence on these street circuits. You've got walls, you've got tyre bundles, there's not a lot of room for error. So it does take these guys a while to get back up to speed. Different tyre compounds have gone down, added to the fact that these are mostly everyday Adelaide streets. There's been some very peculiar weather here over the past six to 12 months. Record downfalls, and particularly in the past few weeks, I don't recall Adelaide seeing this being this green like it is this time of the year. No, definitely not. And uh, as long as the uh, the bad weather that we've seen in the in the previous years stays away this year, we'll uh, we'll be very happy. We're happy if the rain comes next week and they can keep it nice and green. But uh, a nice weekend of uh, warm weather would be quite nice. Well, apparently I'm banned from weather predicting, so I'm going to sit this one out. So they come up to the top of Wakefield Street right now, and as this race continues to go on, the sunset will start to drop further down and you've done races late in the afternoon here that's a big big issue here if you haven't got the right visor on it certainly is on the run up here to turn four the sunlight is directly in your face on the run up here so it does make it hard to be able to pick things like brake markers and turning points and everything like that uh, so you go from like blinding sun and then you turn in and your eyes take a moment to sort of readdress uh, readjust and then you, as you come through uh, turn five on the run up to turn six it's the same thing back down the pit lane I just uh, was having a chat to David Stevenson, father of Chris Stevenson. I think he's running seventh at the moment. Chris uh, came over the radio and said, it's sounding terrible, sounds like a bag of spanners, but it's fast though. So his dad's told him, push on. Cam down in pit lane there as we work our way through lap three of seven. We'll go back to Sue. More replays from the start here from Duckworth. We'll be hating seeing these later on. 
Watch this, he made a lot of ground up and then Thor really shut before he had the opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, it doesn't matter how many times you look at it, that replay doesn't get any better. As we said, it was probably a little bit ad adventurous there on the inside. Uh, you've got to be able to get through there. And in these cars, they're not, they don't take up that much real estate, so you should be able to get through there too wide. And then, obviously, uh, everyone else from there is a bit of a passenger. It's a tough break for Luke Fraser. His best effort. He raced here last year as the rookie of the round they have as part of the contingency awards in the Aussie racing cars. Spent a lot of time in Suzuki Swift Racing and out at Malala, which is the old circuit we used to race at before this became the main event, the Clipsal 500. And not the way his weekend wanted to get underway. In fact, he's back in 14th position right now, so I guess that's the uh, best thing to come out of this. Could be much worse with all that traffic behind him. Not so for Adam Ubergain. These slow-mo shots, they just make it worse, don't they? It just seems to go on and on forever. You watch it in slow-mo, you're like, oh, this doesn't look too bad. And then you look at the amount of damage <laughs> that it creates, and uh, but you watch it in real speed. Um, and, it, and it happens so fast. I've, I've been in situations where cars spin in front of you at this first chicane, and you really are driving blind. You're trying to sort of, uh, as we've seen here, unfortunately for Dantas, he, he was basically just a passenger. The car in front is propped. Everyone's trying to go left, right, see where the cars might be going, um, and unfortunately just rode the wheel of the car in front. Front right of that's going to be very sad. We can't see it from that perspective, but certainly a lot of work to do. Here's what it looked like in real time. The start work got down the inside. Watch the way the 39 just sneaks through the shot here. Comes back out. And there he is, just checking the mirrors. And then Dantas, man, that was a big hit. They continue to improve the safety at all the racetracks we go to. And each year you think, OK, next year we'll come back. There'll be another few metres of tyre wall down there. Much like we saw down here, because there's a lot of big crashes on the way out to Wakefield Street that used to be raw concrete, didn't it? And now these days, a lot of tyre walls out there. It, yeah, definitely. The, the, having the tyre walls there makes it so much better for driver safety. We see them back there on the on the drivers on the left of screen down there. Um, there's been too many big crashes here over the years at that spot, and uh, yeah, definitely the tyre bundles. It just helps absorb the impact. It certainly uh, it's, doesn't doesn't stop the accident, but it certainly absorbs the impact, makes it better for the driver. Uh, but like we saw there, what you've got to be careful of is cars then ricocheting and coming back out of the path of cars. Everyone was very lucky to get through there that time, but that's one of the problems of the tyre bundles is that people tend to ricochet back out, um, and then other people end up becoming involved. Good news is we're going to get a one-lap screamer in. So well done to get that car retrieved and give us what will be a very hectic 3.2 kilometres of racing here. Just like last year, we had safety cars that polluted this race. And now we get a chance with Tressida, Walsh, Robson up to the top three now on debut. Very impressive. Well, these guys we're talking about come from karting over the years and a great step up as they work their way through the categories. Interesting when you look back through the record book, the lap record here was set back in 2006. There's not many categories that can claim the uh, a lap record is uh, 11 years old here at this no, venue. Absolutely not. New tyre compound, of course, is here moving across the Kumo tyre after a, a long relationship with Yokohama. Teams tested during the off-season and all gave it the tick of approval come around back off the main roads. That's Wakefield Road to the left-hand side and into the purpose-built section of this Adelaide Parkland circuit. They'll go back into the rows of two, almost like a speedway start here, and they come back off the final turn. The pressure will be on Kel Dressida right now. Pole position, we haven't had much racing apart from the first 450 metres through turn one and two, but now he seeks redemption. The Kart Centre Perth sponsor, Camaro, who finished third in last year's championship. Ben Walsh is actually in the box seat here because you've now got a two-by-two two rolling grid. You don't have that sort of disadvantage of who's going to get the jump oh. on the standing start. You see the dominoes effect then from Walsh's side. The field had to stack up, and that's benefited. Tracer on the restart here. Huge benefit on the restart there. Nice, clean run into turn one. He needs to get his head down now and get away from these guys. And he's out of here. Is everyone going to get safely through the centre chicane? Please, this time, for one lap, they roar up to the top. Walsh, very bumpy section up here at the top of Wakefield Street. The sun's in your eyes. You've got cars left, you've got cars right. Continue on 
Walsh needs the good run out of turn seven and be in the toe through turn eight for the pass into the Tedible hairpin. The slipstream effect on these cars using every bit of road oh. and some. Oh. I don't know if Walsh got a good enough run off turn seven there. I think Deltrex have got the better run. Here's Duckworth. He's sitting back in fourth position, going past Woods, just squirms his way through. You and I just stood back from the TV monitor, and now Walsh pulls out. I think it was more about going defensive there for Ben Walsh than it was actually to have a look down the inside of Kel Tressida. Oh, Big someone off in the background there. We'll come back to the moment. We're watching the top three coming through the backside of the circuit. And that's the 78 machine that's gone in down. That's Thompson at the bottom of the Kettable Terrace. So Grant Thompson, the Western City Motorsport team, with plenty of work to do tonight. Nonetheless, Kel Tressler leading the crew up to the top and out of the final turn. Well, it's only a one-lap race in the end, but Kel Tressler chalks up the first race win in the Aussie racing cars on the streets of Adelaide. Walsh will hold down second. In fact, the top three covered by less than a tenth of a second. Robson, third position. As we look at Thompson here, that was a wild moment. You and I looked at that car zipping past in the background, and that's the Hertz car again. That's not a good day for those guys. We haven't seen a replay yet as what happened, but we saw the uh, saw the 78 car go skidding down the escape road. So obviously there's been some kind of uh, a collision under brakes. It's lots of uh, fiberglass panels on the right-hand side down there. For the second time, that Hertz car is damaged. So two cars for the WSM team to work through tonight. They both walk away, and that's good to see because that was a high-speed incident down the bottom. Never like to see any kind of incident, and uh, especially on the run down to turn nine there, but uh, great to see both guys out of the cars. You'll see in the background, Thompson straight down the escape road there, already with a lot of damage, so... Um, yeah. It's hard to see, isn't it, really? Because we can't see where the Hertz car come from. And this will be... Oh, how lucky was it then for Woods? If he blinked, he would have missed that completely. That was incredible. Front-end damage to the 78 and the Hertz team with work to do as well, but they're both out of the car. Thankfully, nonetheless, Kel Tressida is the winner by six tenths of a second. Walsh was second. Robson on debut was third. Duckworth, Woods, Kobe Rontanay back in sixth, and Brendan Tucker, Adam Kasuchio back in eighth, Blake Skibberis in ninth, and Luke Fraser from third back to 14th to 10th spot. Sam Melton was 12th, back to Charlotte Pointing. Lee Bowler, Sam Chester completing the top 20, some 16 seconds behind. Bill Hines, 21st position. Matty Dunstan back to Ruth Bowler, Todd O'Brien, and down there to some of the retirees from that first lap skirmish.